Hello again, everybody. Lots of good things to update you about since last month. We continue to plug along on the book and recently came up with a new idea of how to pull the stories together in a way that I'm really excited about. I safely traveled to and from the Twin Cities for the annual Passover celebration. And I had a terrific time participating in Tony P's networking panel discussion for female entrepreneurs last month. That experience in particular felt like a real hurdle for me to clear as I continue to visualize the idea of me getting out there and talking about my story on a regular ongoing basis. In fact, being at the event was a bit of a catalyst for me being able to see the way things are going to continue to unfold for me. The other day at a different event, for the first time, I introduced myself as a solopreneur. It's like the idea of being my own brand continues to become more of who I am and what I do, and it's even becoming a part of my elevator pitch. For those of, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the idea of an elevator pitch, it's that quick 30 second to one minute answer you have in those situations where someone says, what do you do? I've definitely been doing a lot of things lately and at times I feel fatigued. In fact, when I started working on this month's video blog, I was thinking that I felt a little bit fatigued. And then over the last week, I have been hit by a tidal wave of debilitating fatigue, which has zapped my ability to get this video blog out and pretty much everything else in my life. Being fatigued got me thinking about all the different ways fatigue can show up in my life and probably in yours. Fatigue can show up in the small minute to minute things that happen in our daily lives. Or fatigue can show up in bigger ways, either in our bodies or in our minds or both, like it has over the last week for me. I've come to accept that there are times that we need to just push through and there are times we need to take a step back. In fact, I've identified what I like to call the three levels of perseverance one can use when facing fatigue and here they are. Level one, level one is what I like to call the just shut up and do it st strategy as it relates to fatigue. For example, on my trip home from the Twin Cities, I had to catch an early morning flight. I had forgotten that I had a dermatology appointment scheduled for that same afternoon, and my particular dermatologist is extremely hard to get into, so I didn't want to try to reschedule the appointment. I definitely got lucky, and I had good travel mojo that morning because my flight left on time. I was able to grab a quick Uber from the airport drop my stuff off at home, and make it to the dermatologist, dermatologist on schedule for my appointment. Later that evening, I had theater tickets with friends. It was definitely a super full schedule for the day. I really didn't have any other choice though, so I just found a way to make it work. I was really tired that night, but I was proud of myself for pushing through. Overall, this was all small, run-of-the-mill stuff, but I got it done. Level two requires a little bit more contemplation. This is the type of perseverance I like to call the, do I really need to be doing this? Most of you know that I've been doing the MS ride for over 20 years. It's a huge part of my life, and I love contributing to the cause. But lately, I've noticed I've been in this place of fundraising fatigue. It can get tedious to try to raise $10,000 every single year, and I started to wonder whether or not some of my donors are also getting fatigued by having me ask them year after year. I actually sat with things for a week or two and discussed it with some important confidants. What I arrived at was that I'm not really asking people to give their money for myself and that there's still a great need for people to get assistance in inquiring medications and all the other things most of us who are living with MS have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. 
which is why all of you should have received my annual MS letter within the last week or so. No amount is ever too small or too large. The third level of persevering in times of fatigue falls into the category of what I like to call the, I'm not gonna do this category. For me, this is frequently the most uncomfortable place to be operating in. I am not really good at letting go of expectations, and like many people, I have a history of pushing myself too hard in situations where it doesn't even make sense to continue to do so. Does that ever happen to you, my friends? Do you sometimes push yourself too hard when you should be resting? Well, sometimes you just have to say no. For example, on the morning after my return from the Twin Cities after my flight, my dermatology appointment, my night at the theater. I was scheduled to do one of my Vision Quest rides. These rides keep me healthy and assist me in training for the MS bike ride, but they also require me to get up really early in the morning and have a high physical output. This time around though, I didn't set an alarm. I decided if I woke up on time, I would go, but I wasn't going to push myself just because it was my default setting. I guess you could say I was ready to surrender if necessary. But as it turns out, I woke up feeling pretty good and I did the Vision Quest ride anyway. And then as it relates to the massive fatigue I've been dealing with over the last week to 10 days, I had to go fully into the, I'm not gonna push myself through this category and pretty much slept for 15 to, 16 now, 15 to 16 hours each night. There was simply no other prudent or possible choice. In the end, there are no right or wrong answers when it comes to whether or not to push through fatigue or to take a rest. My journey of living with MS continues to evolve for me. I've learned that when I'm not quite sure what I should do next, I need to try to get out of my head and instead just listen to my body while at the same time, listen to my heart. In my heart of hearts, I've always known that there is a balance point between pushing through and letting go. Finding that balance point is worth the effort because facing fatigue in our lives at points is inevitable. Whether or not we need to struggle as a result of that fatigue is a personal choice. Just choose an appropriate level of perseverance and act accordingly. Well, that's all for this month. It's going to be a beautiful and exciting summer, and I can't wait to get out there and ride. The best is most definitely yet to come. Ciao, ciao for now.